Welcome to 6th Standard Science Term 3 Unit 4 Part 1 Our Environment So children listen carefully to the session and in case if you have any doubt make a note of it and it will be rectified on the day of reopening. Ok children now let's start the lesson environment what is environment the surroundings or space in which a person animal or plant lives is known as an environment what is environment the surroundings or space in which a person animal or plant lives is known as an environment children Environment is everything that surround us. It can have both living things and non-living things. It can have both living things and non-living things. Living things is called biotic and non-living things is called abiotic. Living things is called biotic and non-living things is called abiotic. Okay children, now let's see. Biotic factors. Biotic factors are living things of our environment such as plants, animals and microbes. Next, abiotic factors. Abiotic factors are non-living things such as sunlight, water, air and minerals in soil. Now, let's move on to the next topic, Ecosystem. Ecosystem. What is Ecosystem? Ecosystem is a community of living and non-living things that work together. Each part of an ecosystem has a role to play. Any changes in the environment such as increased temperature or heavy rain can have a big impact on on an ecosystem. Children, ecosystem can be either natural or artificial. Now let's see the types of ecosystem. Ecosystem is divided into two types. Natural ecosystem and artificial ecosystem. Natural ecosystem is divided into two types. They are terrestrial ecosystem and aquatic ecosystem. Forest is the example of terrestrial ecosystem and pond is the example of aquatic ecosystem. Next, artificial ecosystem. Artificial ecosystem is divided into two types. They are terrestrial ecosystem and aquatic ecosystem. Garden is the example of terrestrial ecosystem and aquarium is the example of aquatic ecosystem. Next, Let's see the components of an ecosystem. Components of an ecosystem is divided into two types. Biotic components and abiotic components. Biotic components is nothing but all the living components. Example, plants, animals and human beings. Abiotic components is all the non-living components. Children, abiotic components is divided into two types. They are physical factors and adophic factors that is soil. Physical factors such as light, temperature, wind and humidity. Adophic factors such as water in soil, air in soil and organic matter in soil. Ok children, now let's see natural ecosystem. Ecosystem originated without human intervention is called a natural ecosystem. What is natural ecosystem? Ecosystem originated without human intervention is called a natural ecosystem. This can be an aquatic ecosystem or a terrestrial ecosystem. Now let's see one by one. First let's see aquatic ecosystem. The ecosystem in water is called an aquatic ecosystem. The ecosystem in water is called an aquatic ecosystem. Now let's see some examples of aquatic ecosystem. Sea, river, 
लेक पॉन्ड एंड पडल सो दीज आर द एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ अक्वाटिक इको सिस्टम नेक्स्ट लेट सी टेरेस्ट्रियल इको सिस्टम इको सिस्टम आउट साइड द वाटर बॉडी एंड ऑन लैंड आर कॉल्ड टेरेस्ट्रियल इको सिस्टम्स इको सिस्टम्स आउट साइड द वाटर बॉडी एंड ऑन लैंड आर कॉल्ड टेरेस्ट्रियल इको सिस्टम्स now let's see some examples of terrestrial ecosystem forests mountain regions deserts so these are the examples of terrestrial ecosystem next artificial ecosystem artificial ecosystems are created and maintained by human they have some of the characteristics of natural ecosystems they are much similar than the natural ecosystems this can be an aquatic ecosystem or a terrestrial ecosystems paddy fields gardens or the examples of terrestrial ecosystem and fish tank is the example of aquatic ecosystem next let's move on to the next topic food chain and food web living organisms need food to perform their physiological activities some organisms can produce their own food such as plants while other organisms cannot do this and depends on other organisms to obtain their food okay children now let's see the feeding types of mechanisms in an ecosystem they are producers and consumers feeding types of mechanisms in an ecosystem they are producers and consumers okay children now let's see what is producers producers are organisms that are able to produce their own organic food they do not need to eat other organisms producers are also called autotrophs what is producers producers are organisms that are able to produce their own organic food they do not need to eat other organisms and producers are also called autotrophs children can you name an organisms that prepare its own food yes plants are producers because they make their own food by photosynthesis next let's see consumers what is consumers organisms which cannot produce their own food need to eat other organisms as food these organisms are called consumers children what is consumers organisms which cannot produce their own food need to eat other organisms as food these organisms are called consumers children all animals are consumers as they cannot produce their own food consumers are also called heterotrophs consumers are also called heterotrophs children there are many types of consumers and we can classify them into specific groups depending on the food that they consume these are herbivores carnivores omnivores and decomposers there are many types of consumers these are herbivores carnivores omnivores and decomposers okay children now let's see one by one first let's see herbivores animals which eat plants or plant products are called herbivores animals which eat plants or plant products are called herbivores for examples 
cattle, deer, goat and rat. So these are the examples of herbivores. Next carnivores. Animals that eat other animals are called carnivores. Animals that eat other animals are called carnivores. For examples, lion, tiger and frog. So, these are the examples of carnivores. Next, omnivores. Animals that eat both plants and animals are called omnivores. Animals that eat both plants and animals are called omnivores. For examples, humans and dog. So, these are the examples of omnivores. The last one decomposes. Microorganisms that obtain energy from the chemical breakdown of dead organisms, both plants and animals. Microorganisms that obtain energy from the chemical breakdown of dead organisms. Both plants and animals, they break complex organic substances into simple organic substances that goes into the soil and are used by plants. They break complex organic substances into simple organic substances that goes into the soil and are used by plants. Bacteria and fungi are the examples of decomposes. Bacteria and fungi are the examples of decomposes. Next, let's move on to the next topic. Food chain. What does food chain? In a forest, deer eats grass. And in turn, we know tiger eats deer. In any ecosystem, there is a chain like relationship between the organisms that live there. This sequence of who eats who in an ecosystem is called as food chain. Children, what is food chain? In a forest, deer eats grass and in turn we know tiger eats deer. In any ecosystem, there is a chain like relationship between the organisms that live there. The sequence of who eats whom in an ecosystem is called as food chain. And it describes how an organism gets food and nutrients by eating other organisms. A food chain shows the relationship between producers, consumers and decomposer. A food chain shows the relationship between producers, consumers and decomposer. Children see the picture. Plants get energy from sun. Deer gets energy from plants. And tiger gets energy from deer. So it describes how an organism gets food and nutrients by eating other organisms. So, this is the example of food chain in a terrestrial ecosystem. Next, see the picture. Aquatic insect gets energy from aquatic plant and larva gets energy from aquatic insect and fish gets the energy from larva. So, it also describes how an organism gets food and nutrients by eating other organisms. So, this is the example of food chain in an aquatic ecosystem. Okay, children. Now, let's move on to the next topic, energy flow. Children, the food chain begins with the energy given by the sun. The food chain begins with the energy given by the sun. Sunlight triggers photosynthesis in plant. Sunlight triggers 
photosynthesis in plant the energy from the sun is stored in the plant parts energy from the sun is stored in the plant parts children see when the grasshopper eats the grass the energy flows from grass to grasshopper next frog gets energy by eating grasshopper and then this energy is transferred to a crow so children we conclude that primary energy production in the world of living things is produced by plants that is by photosynthesis children see the microorganism degrade the excreta and the dead bodies of animals into primary simple components and puts them back into soil it is this material that help the plants to grow okay children now let's move on to the next topic trophic levels children the energy is passed from the producer to the consumers there are three different consumers in any food chain there are primary consumers secondary consumers and tertiary consumers okay children now let's see one by one first primary consumers animals that eat plants or called primary consumers animals that eat plants are called primary consumers next secondary consumers animals that eat primary consumers are called secondary consumers animals that eat primary consumers are called secondary consumers next tertiary consumers animals that eat secondary consumers are called tertiary consumers animals that eat secondary consumers are called tertiary consumers next quaternary consumers quaternary consumers is nothing but there may even be large predators that eat tertiary consumers they are called as quaternary consumers there may even be large predators that eat tertiary consumers they are called as quaternary consumers children predators is nothing but an animal that naturally preys on other is called predators an animal that naturally preys on others is called predators children primary consumers secondary consumers tertiary consumers and quaternary consumers each of these levels in the food chain is called a trophic level what is trophic level primary consumers secondary consumers tertiary consumers and quaternary consumers each of those levels in the food chain is called a trophic level children see the picture grass is the producer and the grasshopper is a primary consumer rat is a secondary consumer snake is a tertiary consumer and eagle is a quaternary consumer and finally decomposes children organism uses up to 90% of its food energy for its life process and 10% of energy goes into new body cells and it will be available to the next animal when it gets eaten this loss of energy at each trophic level can be shown by an energy pyramid what is energy pyramid this loss of energy at each trophic level can be shown by an energy pyramid children see the picture the rat eats grains the rat eats grains and in turn we know snake eats rat snake eats rat and now snake is a prey for peacock 
Snake is a prey for peacock. And then peacocks are easy prey for tigers and leopards. Children, in all food chain, there is a top level predator that has no natural predators. In an aquatic ecosystem, there are no natural predators. In a forest, there are no natural predators for tigers. Okay children, next let's see the importance of food chain. First one, learning food chain help us to understand the feeding relationship and the interaction between organisms in any ecosystem. Understanding the food chain also help us to appreciate the energy flow and nutrient circulation in an ecosystem. This is important because pollution impacts the ecosystem. The food chain can be used to understand the movement of toxic substances and their impacts. Okay children, next let's move on to the next topic, food web. What is food web? Consumers have different sources of food in an ecosystem and do not rely on only one species for their food. If we put all the food chains within an ecosystem together, then we end up with many interconnected food chains. This is called a food web. Children, what is food web? Consumers have different sources of food in an ecosystem and do not rely on only one species for their food. If we put all the food chains within an ecosystem together, then we end up with many interconnected food chains. This is called a food web. Children, a food web is very useful to show different feeding relationships between different species with an ecosystem. See the picture. A food web shows the transfer of energy within an ecosystem. Energy is transferred between organisms when one organism eats another. Okay children, now we came to an end of this session. So maintain a separate notebook for science. If you have any doubt, make a note of it. Okay children, it's time for questions. Once again, you can go through the lesson and answer for those questions. First one, define ecosystem. Second one, give an example for biotic factors. Third one, define natural ecosystem. Fourth one, define food chain. Fifth one, define food web. Okay children, I hope you all have understood this video session. Let's meet in our next session with more interesting topics.